we are we have some technical problem with some of the participants some of the, the speakers but uh, we would start by uh, introducing each uh, panelist each speakers um so welcome to the webinar Arca security webinar on, on security threats in Sahel and sub-Sahara regions. Um, this seminar is part of the uh, Arca security webinar series and uh, um, also it's part of the joint seminar series with IGSDA, um, um, Institute of Global Security and Defense Affairs um, chaired by I. Uh, Dr. Said Ghanim, and the the entire series is titled. Uh, oof, oh, no, no, sorry, <laughs> we are stuck. Yes, and wait, wait. Um, the entire um series is, is entitled uh, uh, the uh, geopolitical dynamism in the wider Middle East region, and this round of seminar is, is titled. Uh, security threats in Sahel and Sub-Sahara regions. Um, but prior to moving on to the main topic of, of the, today's uh, topic, uh, Sub-Sahara and the Sahel region, um, Dr. Saidu Ghanem will introduce us to the recent situation in the Middle East and North Africa uh, with which Biden administration is faced. Uh, so, uh, we have two parts now. Is a, there's short introductory part by, by uh, Dr. Uh, Said Ghanim, and we will make short Q and A session right after uh, General Ghanim's presentation. It's about the situation in the Middle East and North Africa and what uh, the, the Biden administ administrations. Middle East policy is faced with. So, so then after his talk and question um, answer session, we will go into the main topic of Sahel and Sub Sahara regions and security threats. So, uh, first, um, Dr. Said Honeim, as always, uh, we, we um, depend on you in, in summing up the situation, security situation in the Middle East and North Africa. So it, it's it's your turn, please. Okay, let me share my yes. uh, screen first. Okay, just before I start, thank you so, so much. And I'm very happy to continue with our seminars. And maybe I would like everybody knows that I was ready with my presentation about Africa, but uh, Professor Satoshi would like also we agreed together to give more opportunities Mm -hmm. uh, to more speakers. So in this time, I will avoid my lecture about Africa and I will talk with my uh, uh, opening remarks, mm -hmm. uh, something concerning uh, mm -hmm. Biden. Mm -hmm. So uh, I will talk about what Biden administration, administration is faced uh, with in the Middle East region as like a reality check. This is what I will talk about. Actually, I made like something like questions, but before I start, something I believe that it's really true and I will try to prove it. Or even as I told you to find some questions and answer them, that USA is not fully controlling the Middle East right now. It's a fact, I believe. Uh, uh, and also Biden did a lot of things since he started. Uh, and some of them, which really I noticed that he made like vice versa, undo many things happened uh, or achieved by or decided by the Trump's uh, administration. Uh, but in the same time, will he continue this way or what challenges may confront him? Mm -hmm. Then we'll go to my questions. Before the questions, maybe I think we need to talk about what are the main goals of the Middle East uh, and of USA in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. I believe there are, there are five main goals. 
and from these five main goals which should be achieved by United States, then the challenges will come to Biden. Energy security. In this point, exactly that, I think three main points to the United States. First of all, securing energy resources to, to itself and to its allies, which always announced, that's fine. Second point to the advantage of selling oil only in the US dollars, which is very important to the United States. And the third point that this, both of the first two points, this enable the United States to control, let me say it, control the industrial countries. Because when it has its hand on the oil, so I think it can do something with its competitors. A lot of several countries are in a very good ground, same ground of the United States and security political, but not maybe not the same level uh, economic wise. So competition comes here economically, so they have to control industrial countries sometimes when they need. Second goal, fully support to Israel. Uh, it, it doesn't mean this word looks provocative, but I see it in different way that fully supported doesn't mean to be with Israel against others because Israel is now to have bigger community among the Arab region. But the fully support, which is used to, which I think it will be a little bit changing in the coming time from fully support to just support maybe or other level. So this was for the one of the main strategic goals of the United States, which is hegemony, domination, because when I have a country inside the Middle East like a backbone and it can keep the regional order the way I like, I mean, as United States through Israel, then it will be, it will help a lot maybe through Israel, especially after sometimes many several years passed through the Middle East and it was like nationalism, President Nasser after like the peace treaty, but still it took time to be really to have Israel with a specific role in the in the region, which may help the main strategy of the United States and its goal in, in the Middle East. Fighting terrorists. And that's what they are doing right now. And maybe they will do more sometime, but not the same concentration as they were doing before, but they have to fight ter terrorists because I believe three main challenges to any US strategy which is civil war or conflicts between two countries, especially in the same region, which influenced by the United States and terrorism. This really break a lot of issues in the American strategy. The fourth one, confronting its competitors because China and Russia will never, would never stay in their location. They have to go out and one of the regions the United States is the Middle East, and they have to keep concentration in the Middle East to confront its competitors. And the last one, uh, which is maintaining freedom of the US maritime navigation and even global maritime navigation through the Red Sea, through the Indian Ocean, through South Canal, East Mediterranean, up to and from the United States. Then I go to the second one, which is changes and challenges confront Biden administration in the Middle East. First question, is it possible to return to the joint comprehensive plan of action? I don't think so, why? Because Iran itself, because you know, Trump withdraw with his country from GCPOA that was in May, I think 2018. From May 2018 until now, the reaction by Iran was more internal. So they increased their capabilities. They didn't reach really the very serious and critical level, but they are almost there. That's why, yeah, it takes time, but it became different. So if we would like to go back to the GCPOA, Iran must go back to before May 2018, which I think something like almost impossible or very difficult. And then, is it possible to restore US strategic alliance with Turkey, Turkey spe specifically? I believe that Turkey has two main problems with USA, and USA is currently has a, a specific main problem with Turkey. 
as I mentioned in the second uh, uh, seminar, this is the last one concerning the East Mediterranean, that Turkey is very important to both Russia and United States because several reasons. One of them is geostrategic location. From its geostrategic strategic location, we see uh, Strait of Bosporus, Bosphor we call it, and Strait of Dardanelles, which allow allies or others even to go through from Asian and East Mediterranean Sea to the Black Sea. So Russia does need this passage to be very free for it and even to keep Turkey friendly. USA needs this passage also. And as I mentioned, even that Turkey is, is at the front in the front defensive line of NATO, the southern one since 1950 something. And that's why it's very important to them. But the two main problems from the United States toward Turkey is number one, supporting the Kurds, Kurds and um, the Kurdish, I mean, force especially in Syria. And this may, that was because to do one of the main goals is to fight in terrorism because they were fighting ISIS, Daesh. So, and that's why Turkey said that USA is double standard because they support uh, 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 YGB, which they are prescribed as terrorists at the same time to fight terror terrorism. And the Kurds, as, as we all aware that 40% of them, they are in Turkey. So if they have the independence somehow, if they are promised by the United States, then maybe it will divide or affect seriously specific countries like Syria, Iraq, Iran, and mainly Turkey, which has the 40% of the Kurdish population. The second point, which is Fathallah land, because Fathallah land is against Turkey, and he was condemned that he was the one of the main reason of the military coup in middle of July 2016 against Turkey, the failed one. So USA was condemned to support them. But in the same time, Turkey also, you know, after the S-400, which it pulled from Russia, so that was really big panic with the F-35, the American one, because of the not only uh, security reason of this uh, as a kind of equipment, military equipment uh, system of NATO, but also technological problem because if you have F-35 and you have its enemy in industrial country like Turkey, then maybe the circuit of F-35 has to be taken to be, you know, uh, uh, feed it to the missile to not to hurt the F-35 as friendly uh, aircraft in the same country has the two missiles or the two weapons against each other. So deal is a century and the annexation. As we are aware that Biden, during his uh, Obama administration when he was vice president, he was against settlements, annexations, uh, even shifting uh, uh, the American embassy to Jerusalem and many other things done uh, during Trump's era. But is he really able to change? Even he declared that I cannot go back for several reasons. And I have learned it from Dr. John Psycho even just, and I mentioned that in my paper that the, the Jewish lobby and, and Israeli lobby inside the United States support even Biden. So he doesn't want, I'm not Biden himself, but I mean the Democrats. So he doesn't want to lose this bunch of people I mean, uh, or Luby inside his country. So it's not easy to go back anyway. Uh, and escalation of the crisis in the Middle East, they are escalating. And if we go back to the strategic goals of the United States, we can find something specific like in Yemen, in Yemen, for example. So, you know, the humanitarian, humanitarian aids problem is increasing uh, and, you know, horses are not, are prescribed as a terrorist group. And this, you know, is new enemies to the United States. This is number one. Second, I mean, I like horses because you have also Qaeda as terrorist group inside Yemen, and also threatening the maritime navigation routes, which is one of the main goals of the United States in Syria. And so if I go back to Syria, you will find something that Assad, Assad is still controlling his country. And at the same time, Daesh is still there and other terrorist group, and remember, and maybe one of our colleagues will talk about that today, that Jabhat al-Nusra, which became Fath al-Sham, it's one of the lonely groups preferred to stay inside Syria and not to go out to Africa 
just to keep its identity and it is belonging to Al-Qaeda, which is very important here. And then this saying two things, not I, I belong to Qaeda, which is coming to our, our, our seminar today, but the important thing in month session, which I'm talking right now, that is keeping one of the big terrorist, bigger, biggest terrorist groups inside Syria, inside the region, which is one of the main goals, as I told you, to fighting a uh, terrorist group in the region. In Lebanon, remember that Lebanon, Lebanon is still influenced by Iran. So, the coming relations between Iran and USA is very important for the future of Lebanon. I think so. So we have to be very careful when we look at it. If I go to restore the countries of the region, the alliance, trust, restore the trust of the countries, something very important here. Some time ago, we didn't care, I mean, in our region about Democrats or Republicans, but since, since, you know, Obama, after the Arab Spring, let me say, they became very important to us. So, Arab, don't trust Democrats, don't like them, because of specific U.S. values, you know, uh, and which we call it Western democracy, Western democracy, I'm sorry. At the same time, even after Trump, a lot of Arab countries, they don't trust him as Republican, or even the Republicans, why? He did a lot, he achieved a lot to Israel, more than his allies, other allies of the United States, like for example, the Gulf countries or like Egypt or even, he did a lot for all of them, but look at Israel. Israel now they have Golan Heights, the new uh, 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 American embassy and others, by the way, in Jerusalem, uh, they have the settlements, as I mentioned, uh, the deal of century, uh, uh, Israeli American way, which, Maybe I think it's a good opportunity, but not like by Palestinian. But anyway, what can I say? Israel earned a lot. That that earned a lot or gained a lot. That really not, it, it, I mean, reduce the trust of the Republicans that still supporting Israel is the main goal to United States. Is it possible to maintain the balance of the toward region, you know, between US values and US interests? When I, when I call interest here, it, I mean, all types or all aspects of interest. The problem here, what? what? This is here very sensitive, especially to Biden. Biden during Obama era was against stepping like, for example, Mubarak, President Mubarak, the Egyptian president, down. Same like Hillary Clinton. For sure he's a democratic person, even he, he believes in democracy and so on, uh, but he is not very realistic. Okay, like Obama. But for sure also, he is not very pragmatic like Trump. So I think he will try to make a balance between values and interests here. Not very realistic with values or, or, or very, very, how can I say with, uh, yeah, yeah, with values, because I don't find the word in English, not very pragmatic. So he will find a line in between. I think so. This is my thinking. So, and, and it's really a challenge for him. It's really a challenge because uh, before I go to the next one, see, peace treaty with Egypt, human rights in different countries and the Arab from at least American point of view, uh, armament and military aids to, to several countries, including one of the most important one, Egypt. And many things are connected. So, and by the way, Human rights, one of the protocol attachment of the peace treaty, not the military aids, peace treaty between Israel and Egypt, but again, they keep on the military aids because of interest, the US goal, avoiding US values. I think that he will continue, I mean Biden, same way, somehow in the middle. Then is it possible to restore the prestige of the US? U.S. now, you know, not as before. And I think as it was very important and it did something with Russia, I think also the prestigious uh, uh, phase must come somehow to the United States. So uh, especially in front of Russia and China. And as Eric told me, I remember very nice word. Yes, still America first, 
as you know from Biden, but not alone. So yeah, China and Russia is there, but prestige of United States, I think. This is very important to United States to be restored somehow. And I remember very well when Turkey was expanding and Russia with its armed forces and everybody was saying, United States doesn't, doesn't do anything. Everybody is moving when uh, 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 everywhere they want, like the military exhibition uh, of Saudi Arabia in Yemen and Obama didn't like to support it to his military, only with logistics later and, uh, uh, and uh, intelligence. But, this is the security dynamics. So how he will deal with a lot of security dynamics because he must believe now there are other participants, other sharing countries, Russia and China. So negotiation, all. So he will have to undermine Russia somehow because I believe that China is depending on Russia. And I added one attachment, you know, in my paper talking about increasing of the relations between Russia and China since 2019 only. I wrote five points and there are in my book, eight points, which I did, I know, I mean, globally. So, and this give indications that how China will depend more on Russia for specific reason in the region, I mean, that Russia has the experience of the involvement in many crises and, uh, 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 and issues in the Middle East, and it has experience. I think China will need it somehow. Maybe they are doing something even right now. Last one, and thank you, Eric, for this, that what Biden administration will do if Mohammed bin Salman becomes, for any reason, king tomorrow. Because I remember very well the statement of the White House saying, from today, we will deal with King Salman as a as the king of Saudi Arabia, starting from Today, that was 16 February, I think, or something or 20. So I think it's also offensive. It's embarrassing somehow, according not only to the culture, but Mohammed bin Salman was a masterpiece in Saudi Arabia in the last four years. So what happened if he becomes tomorrow? It's another new challenge. Yeah, it looks good to everybody, but maybe it will be challenged if something happened in the short term and he became um, a king. Remarks and future perspectives. I have two main remarks. Number one, as I mentioned in my introduction, US is not no longer the fully influencing the Middle East region. And China, Russia are there. This is one of the most important. Second one, will USA will have to do like Russia? How? What is the main difference between Russian and American foreign policy with allies or non-allies. USA, I think, they work in a grand strategy, which was well known to United States, maybe national security strategy or bigger, bigger even a grand strategy. And then they have the specialized strategies, military, economic, uh, uh, political, whatever the strategy, health and so on. And then, the foreign relation with other countries within these strategies. So you feel it's very systematic, but not flexible, no flexibility. So that's why you find them according to their strategy, they have only two lists, friends and enemies. Nothing in the middle, not that easy. Russia, no. Russia, they go piece by piece because you don't have this grand strategy. They are more realistic. And I have my strategy for my country and my foreign relations, and you don't know them. Just I'm with you. And then when I see countries like Turkey and Iran, mainly they are the biggest regional powers, the true regional powers in the region. They are the true historical empires. They are really the true promising countries if they were more free and liberal, liberal, so I mean, free to move with their powers and cap capabilities. So not to be with one of them against the other, but to manage their competition between them. This is the containment policy, which everybody knows, is how to manage competition between the competitors, not to, have to be with other against one against other. 
and even Israel became part of that. There was the three main competitors. Look at the relation with Saudi Arabia, at the relation with Emirates. They have special case by case, case by case. And they do always among competitors, as I told you, when, it need, what's need, when it's needed, containment policy. USA doesn't do that. They are more skillful in this level. I mean, the Russians. Is it, it, is it will be in the American strategy in the coming future, or they will continue with their non-flexibility as American that in dealing in foreign policy. Confrontation, I think that Biden, if I'm not wrong, yeah. Uh, I think that Biden will have, as I said, a big inclusive grand strategy. Maybe, listen, any strategy, I mean, like, okay, for example, wider or greater Middle East, it had mainly three or four uh, main pillars. One of them was democracy. Look at the Chinese Belt and Road, no democratic pillar or dimension in Belt and Road, right? So I think as China learned, I, I don't say it's good or bad, remember this, remember this, but I'm talking about realis realism, this is the title, what on the ground to verify what's going on the ground right now, okay? So maybe, democracy and this type of approach from United States will be a little best in their grand strategy and some other element. Will it be more flexible, as I said, thinking about containment policy, thinking about something different from enemies and friends to see more interests and less interests with the countries? Will it think this way? Uh, his flexibility in the foreign policies, I think, will depend on two axes. First of all, restore U.S. strategic allies. Why U.S. is losing a strategic allies from all what I mentioned before? Mainly the way of dealing. And here, as I told you, the balance between values and interests. Not very pragmatic, like Trump. Not very realistic or valuable, like Obama. I think. Second, to reduce US list of enemies, as I mentioned. That's why maybe Biden declared, for example, just for example, you know, it's non actor state like Houthis, but he declared, but it's part of the country of Yemen. He declared that we will lift, you know, this we will lift Houthis from terrorist organization, proscribed terrorist organization, list, like for example. So, and also Iran, what he will do with Iran in the future. Uh, maybe he will be even more than, than Obama, you know, in deal with Iran. Iran is enemy. Iran is a threat for many other reasons, but again, not to make it enemy, not to put always on the corner of the enemy. I, maybe he will think this way and other countries for sure. But it will be taken, not even as I told, it's not shifting from enemies to friend uh, list. But the most important interest this is the main frame, I think, maybe he will think about. Fi final point, which is, I think he will think, as I mentioned, of containing the revealing, the competitors. No more intervention in internal issues. Rem they, they remember for sure, everybody knows about leading from behind strategy or ideology uh, which has or principle which has been mentioned by Obama. I think he will continue on this. But remember, leading from behind doesn't doesn't mean that I'm away. Big difference between leading from behind and acting from behind. Action, or even acting directly. Action will be by the countries, uh, like what's going on in Egypt when it's fighting its own terror, terrorist groups. You know, which are fighting inside, but supporting Egypt more, even in the military aid. Rather than giving Egypt tanks, airplanes, and so on, blah, 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 giving them anti terrorism or fighting or counter terrorism weapons and ammunition and so on. Okay, this is all from my side. Uh, I hope I didn't take time and uh, I'm ready for any questions. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, generous uh, side of the name. Um, so we, we, we take questions from the floor. Um, is there any questions or comments? 
would you just um um raise your hand by by using blue hand um <coughs> actually we are now waiting for oh general moral bit he, he was once in but uh, uh he was in yeah exactly but, but now he, he he's again out so we, our staff is searching for him <laughs> so uh, so uh, so thank, thank you thank you for for your presentation a very broad um insight and uh, uh well so you, you're you know uh basically your assessment for the first one or two months of Biden administration is, is you know, not high. Um, so, you know, oh, oh, oh Dr. Kakizaki is raising her hand. So um, please, um, Dr. Kakizaki, uh, would you make questions? Uh, yeah. Um... Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gonein. Uh, so um, I am curious about Biden's policy or how can he bring back NATO into the, into the, uh, the international relations of the Middle East? Uh, you didn't talk about NATO's role in the Middle East or North Africa, but now NATO is internally uh, divided. We have the uh, different interests, competing interests and positions between, let's say, France, Turkey, and Italy toward Libya, for instance. And so uh, NATO is not really a coherent, internally uni unified uh, intergovernmental organization. What can Biden do about NATO? How can he bring back this institution for the uh, stability of the region? Any thoughts? Thank you. Oh, yeah. First of all, let me tell you two information, just one information I have received it from uh, Egyptian, uh, from, uh, I mean, one of my friends, I mean, official somehow. Uh, I knew uh, that, you know, Egypt and Emirates were almost out from NATO, not to be extended, were almost in their in the Mediterranean dialogue and ICI, but just a few days ago that Egypt has been extended for two years with NATO, uh, Emirates and other countries in ICI extended for six months. So to be six months by six months. If I go back, I think what I noticed that Biden is doing something, if I, before I come back to NATO, not very nice which is doing the same policy of Trump of reversing what the previous person was doing. Like Trump was always reversing everything Obama was doing. And now Biden is reversing or undoing everything Trump was doing. One of them, the relation with international organizations or regional organizations, one of them NATO. So I hope that I believe even it has been declared by Biden that all international organization, our relations with NATO will get back and we will reconsider, you know, our participation with the, the fight, I mean, the funding, I mean, even from United States to NATO and so on, that it will be taken and considered not like before. So I believe that, I hope it's away from Trump, as I told you, not undoing, but I believe that he will consider NATO for specific reasons, away from Trump. As you, as you notice, I mentioned th something about the grand strategy. Grand strategy of the United States is including several aspects. One of them is the military strategy and which really United States depend on and it will continue to depend on. And I think if the United States will not intervene as US armed forces inside any crisis or any problem inside any issue in specific country with American forces, then it will have to depend on NATO somehow because existence, military existence is still needed. So, and then it will be through something like NATO, for example. And remember that the biggest participation of NATO is United States. 
and also one of the biggest interests always achieved uh, military wise through NATO and even sometimes protocol. So I think, I think he will fix what, according to his view, what Biden spoiled in relations specifically with NATO. He will use, he will try to think in a grand strategy, as I told you, within the bigger strategy, which I think is under process right now. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, yeah, it, 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 you, in your presentation, you know, um, yeah. tell, uh, one of the key ally of the United States is still Turkey, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, there is a, uh, of course, there are so much, you know, sensitive issue between Turkey and the United States and um, particularly by President Biden himself uh, is not so, you know, highly regarded by, by you know, Turkish officials. So uh, do you think, you know, still in, in, in these political uh, differences uh, uh, aside, um, the 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 logic, you know, uh, the purpose of ally alliance would prevail between, you know, U.S. and Turkey, and, and you know, um, in, in a way, Turkish American security relations will be intact in, in the in the you know coming four years. Uh, is, uh, do you for, uh, is it foreseeable uh, in, in if there's any you know drastic change? Uh, on the Turkey, you know, front for for U.S. security policy in the Middle East. I read an article maybe one year ago to Elam Berman. He's my friend. He's American one. Mm -hmm. And the first line of the article, it's a statement by some Turkish friend of him, mm -hmm. saying that this year will be the worst year of relations between Turkey and USA. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned that every year this word is repeated. Mm -hmm. And every year it's noted that every year is worse than before. Mm -hmm. And I think, I don't know, maybe he's Democrat or again is Biden, again is Trump that time even at this. Uh, and, but I think, yes, why? Mm -hmm. Why am, I, I give you this introduction of answer. See how many years that accumulate worsening you know, in the relations mm -hmm. between Turkey, accumulate, remember, it's not stable relation as bad, but worsening, worse and worse and worse every year. How many other years, if they decide to do something better, it will take. Mm -hmm. This is one angle. Mm -hmm. Number two, remember what I mentioned here, three main points between, main points, other several points, mm -hmm. between USA and Turkey. Kurds mm -hmm. supporting Fatallah Ogren, and on the other hand, S400 for Turkey. Mm -hmm. So now two, two, how can I say, two dimensions or two points to answer your question. These two must be overcome. Mm -hmm. The accumulate, accumulate years of bad relation and the specific points of bad relation between both of them. So I think this will need to, to end up what makes problem between us first. Mm -hmm. That tell us, like, remember, what increase even the problem between Turkey and USA and create a new problem between Turkey and Israel, supporting Israel to Kurds and asking for, announcing for independence for Kurdistan, right? So it's increasing as USA, for example, I don't say again, I'm with or again it, but as USA declared by Trump, for example, that supremacy of Morocco of Western Sahara. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So maybe Turkey is thinking about something opposite. Mm -hmm. You know, recognition mm -hmm. of God stand that they are not whatever. Mm -hmm. They cannot be independent country. Mm -hmm. They cannot be independent. This is requested by United States to makes the relation much better, mm. right? This is mm. one of the things. And also S-400, mm. the, the main point also Russia itself, 
Russia is here, it became not like small stone in the throat, but big stone over here, I can say, you know, to United States in its relation with Turkey. That's it. Thank you very much. And now we, General Giuseppe Morabito is in the room. So we now move on to the Africa part. And 